Fortinbox.com here. So Robinhood warns trading frenzy is slowing as it seeks $35 billion IPO valuation. So if you don't have the Robinhood app, feel free to go to Fortinbox.com, scroll down, and you could actually just join Robinhood and potentially get a free stock worth up to $500 if it's the first time you've ever downloaded Robinhood and all that kind of stuff, right? But when you're in there, you'll actually see them offering their own IPO to potential customers that are already on the website or brand new customers, right? Now, this is like an interesting concept where they're trying to make it a little bit more available to like the retail investors, right? Where like you don't have to be like an accredited investor of like making $250,000 per year or have like, you know, like a million dollars in like net worth or something like that. And it makes it very interesting. But the problem with this is that these IPOs, will never go how people really expect them to go, right? So if you stumble upon this basically episode, this is more of like a warning because like, look, if you decide to invest into this IPO, right? Let's say that you were to get the free stock worth up to $500 by going to 40unbox.com and then just scrolling down and clicking get a free stock. If you were to actually invest into this IPO from Robinhood, if they allow you to actually buy their IPO, because they're kind of being a little bit selective, be forewarned that you should only use money that you're like literally willing to like burn to a crisp, right? Like I would not ever suggest someone who is like living paycheck to paycheck or like has a whole bunch of debt or doesn't even have an emergency fund in place to actually go into this situation and buy this IPO, right? Even if for some reason you had some extra cash just lying about, or if you wanted to use this on a credit card, I would not suggest anything like that. And, you know, because this is like, this is a situation where like you're basically trying to buy a lottery ticket and hopefully it ends up paying off, right? Because... Long term, Robinhood, their stock might be worth quite a lot, right? As long as they keep on growing, as they keep growing their revenue and all that kind of stuff, right? I could see Robinhood being worth quite a lot, probably even like $100 per share. I could see that happening. That being said, is it worth the risk of it going down to like a few dollars? For most people, it's not, right? But if you have some like extra cash like lying around and you're not hurting for it, it's literally not going to change your life. Basically, the way that I would explain it is, let's say that you have no debt, you have an emergency fund, your job is pretty secure, and you have some like just extra cash lying around on top of your emergency fund of like $5,000 or something, right? If you were to spend $2,000 of that extra cash and put it into this IPO, it wouldn't actually change your life at all. It wouldn't matter to you at all, period, end of story, right? And in that case, go ahead and do it because it doesn't actually change your financial life at all. But this is something that someone should not do if you're living paycheck to paycheck or if you're in a huge amount of debt, if you have a huge amount of student loan debt, Like, that is something that you do not want to get involved in because it could go south. Like, you just don't know which way it's actually going to go. It could pay off and you can make, you know, a crazy amount of money, right? Or it could go super down low. Robin Hood could go bankrupt and you lose every single thing, right? Like, you never know when it comes to single stocks, right? And, like, people sometimes will believe, like, oh, you know, single stocks would be so amazing. You know, I could, you know, 10x my money over the long term, but... The thing is, there's been people who have put all of their money into a single stock and lost everything. And I mean everything. They lost every single cent, which is why it's such a dangerous thing to be so focused on like single stocks. And if you want to learn how to master your money, go down below because like choosing single stocks is something that you should really only do 
with cash that you have extra, right? That you could like just burn and not care about. So let's get into the story, right? So Robinhood warned the retail stock trading frenzy that has boosted its finances over the past 18 months appears to be waning, even as it seeks a blockbuster valuation in its upcoming IPO. So the popular trading app, which has been used by legions of rookie investors in this year's Reddit rally, could be valued as high as $35 billion and raise as much as $2.3 billion in its upcoming initial public offering, according to an amended prospectus filing on Monday. Nevertheless, Robinhood also signaled it expects to report a slowdown in trading revenue and new clients, particularly in cryptocurrencies, according to the filing in the current quarter versus the quarter ended June 30th when demand was exceptionally strong. And if you don't recall what this kind of situation is, it was basically revealed in their like financial statements that they made a massive amount of money and was mainly due to Dogecoin specifically. Like Dogecoin and it's like weird cult hype basically generated a disgusting amount of revenue for Robinhood. So nevertheless, Robinhood, yeah, okay, no, no. the anticipated slowdown would come after a bump year for the company that saw its numbers of accounts more than double. The Menlo Park, California-based company estimates they now have almost 22.5 million funded accounts, up from 9.8 million a year ago. And in the first quarter, Robinhood posted a loss of $6.26 a share on revenue of $522.2 million as it was forced to raise $3 billion in cash to staunch a liquidity crisis spurred by frenzied trading in GameStop and other fast-moving stocks. Still, Robinhood said it expects to price its stock between $38 and $42 a share, according to Monday's filing. So a $40 stock price would bring in $2 billion and value the company at $33 billion, according to Monday's filing. So the company, which will list on NASDAQ under the ticker HOOD, will sell 52.4 million shares and its founders will look to cash in 2.6 million shares. So the San Francisco-based company's filing also revealed key financial data that will give investors a better sense of the app's growth potential. So estimates it now has 22.5 million active users, or nearly double the 13 million users it had in 2020. So in a nod to his retail investors, Robinhood is setting aside around 30% of its shares so users can buy stock at its listing price before it begins trading. However, the company will be seeking most of its capital from institutions and will begin the process of pitching investors, known as a roadshow, this week. So lead underwriters for the deal include Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, and J.P. Morgan. So Robinhood, which has been criticized for the gamification of trading, soared in popularity during the pandemic as stuck-at-home consumers looked for ways to spend their stimulus checks. But its decision to halt buying a Reddit rally favored GameStop earlier this year spawned a spate of congressional hearings. And Robinhood was accused of a conflict of interest in banning GameStop buys, and Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev who has denied the allegations, was forced to defend the company's actions in front of top political figures earlier this year. And the controversy resulted in newly tapped SEC chief Gary Gensler vowing to look at the GameStop's business model, cautioning investors in a hearing earlier this month that there's no such thing as a free app. There are costs. It's like an iceberg. Most of the iceberg is below the surface, Gensler said. The costs are below the surface, and that's actually pretty true with basically explaining Robinhood. And the thing is, again, no idea how this Robin IPO will act, like Robinhood IPO will actually go. It could end up turning very well for the people who end up buying into the IPO, right? It could turn out very well. Some people could potentially get rich off of it. You never know. Or people could buy in, crash it to like ten dollars or twenty dollars, basically causing people to lose their whole life savings, and then basically the people who have crazy amount of funds will just buy at the low point. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. 
what I'm going to expect to happen is that there's going to be a lot of people selling off on Robinhood. That's what I'm thinking is probably going to happen because anytime you have like institutional investors that buy in before it starts publicly trading, they tend to like buy in at a very, very low price and then immediately sell for a return, right? And they just crash the stock price of the company typically, right? So that's what I'm thinking is probably going to happen with this. I think that Robinhood is going to go like, it probably started around like $50 and then crashed down to like 20 or 25 or something, then slowly start going back up. But I don't know, right? No one knows what's actually going to happen in this situation because Robin has such like a weird cloud around it from the whole GameStop thing and also just the amount of revenue that it's able to bring in. Like you just don't really know what it really holds, like what people really view it as like the worth of it. So it'd be interesting to see, but the only thing that I could say is only invest money that you are 100% willing to lose every single cent of it. Because that very well could actually happen with Robinhood. You never know. So just be careful. Do your due diligence. If you have some extra spending cash and instead of just, you know, spending money on like a lottery ticket or like a brand new bicycle or something or a motorcycle or brand new car or whatever it is you want to spend and you want to like take a gamble on this thing because you have extra cash to just gamble it or just see what happens, go ahead and do that. But just be very careful and never invest money that you need to live on or all that kind of stuff, right? Just keep that in mind. By the way, if you need help with building a strong financial foundation so that you could take more risk later on and like invest into IPOs like this where it's not going to affect you one way or the other, go down below and learn the secret to mastering your money.